Hi, this is Jay Ossing from Twin Peaks The Return. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto. What you're about to hear here, folks, was uh, started on March 18th, and I've just now finally got around to uh, uploading this thing. I've had the segments on there, and by now you've probably heard a lot of these philosophies and a lot of these theories already out there in the world concerning the pandemic. Uh, however, if you haven't heard these theories, they might they might cause you to think about some stuff, and um, maybe they coincide with your own theories. Who knows? Maybe you've been having a lot of discussions with your friends and family uh, during this time. So the first person we're going to hear here is Melanie Fernandez. Uh, I did an interview with her uh, at she and her husband Tony's house. Tony is in Peace Frog, the Doors tribute band. And if you listen to this podcast, you'll know that we were going to do a live stream, and then that's when everything got locked down. Um, and and it just didn't work. Uh, Melanie has a new album coming out. She's got a new music video, and so I went over there and I interviewed her about it. And uh, so this is her driving me home and telling me a really unique experience. You're going to hear a lot of stuff on here. Thank you also to Jay Aseng from Twin Peaks for giving us such a nice promo in the beginning there. And also a real-life superhero for giving us the bookend on this. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. To Inspirato Projecto. I went out there. Well, wait, I, this was when you were still in Austria? In Austria. And, 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 I, and you, you I, had a dream, you looked out yes, across the way. Right, now, it was a dream though that, that I. Right. Right, so in my dream, uh, on my balcony, on the roof, that there was a UFO landing. And Interesting. Came, and now, but listen now, uh, I went out there and saw it and I froze as well. And I couldn't move, oh. like, but it was in my dream, but I tell you, it was real. I can't tell you if it was real or dream. It was so real, I was totally shocked, actually. Whoa. And I was really, like, afraid, but they froze me. They did the same thing. I couldn't move, and what I did was, I knew what, what was going on, and I used all my force, like, like extreme, the most energy, to break this froze, like, like to get out of I knew I had to like extremely use my strongest mental powers to get out of that because wow. you can't move it's so like crazy you know they, they had yeah. this, this documentary it's, it's, called, on Netflix called Nightmares and I'm afraid to watch it I've never uh-oh. been afraid but In this one's about dreams have you ever had a dream where you were held right. down I did and they explain it and it, you watch it just, just the trailer I said fuck this I ain't oh watching boy. it Oh so boy! If you get, if you get the like the night terrors, walk, they call them, right? Well, Is yeah, that what they, they call them? Night terrors, and they explain oh. that they're actually spirits that come in and they're holding you down. And Dude, I'm like, I've had it happen to me, so I'm. Dude, like, yeah. I, I, I said no, I can't watch this. Oh my god! The one thing I went, no. Oh so my god! Like, it's on. It's on uh, uh, Netflix. It's called Nightmares. Like, oh I, boy! I never had this. Like when I came here. In Austria, I never had like something like holding down or this or that. But when I came and I was in the apartment in Venice, I had this like two times. And I was like, this is your half asleep and it, it holds you down. It's terrible. And then he actually told me that he knew someone has happened to them. And it, like I was then praying really and meditating and it went away and it never came back though. Wow. But it was really... This oh, yeah. is so scary. Those are, those are evil. Like, Dude. That's so scary. But you know, now you, you're not going to flip out. You know when that actually happened? Uh-huh. Oh, that's really heavy. Her when I no, when I hung that Chimora's big poster on the wall, yeah, you use the right oh. two lanes and to keep right he said freeway you should adventure. not summon that energy too much, like always looking at it. And when you see it, it's so big. It was his face really big because he said he also has it had his demons. Keep right. And wow. So really, I, I put the poster up because he wanted to actually. Oh yeah, one thirty-four. Oh, oh, that's right. That's okay. Oh, 
It's alright, it's alright. Yeah, so yeah. He wanted to um, use that poster for something else, and then they, he didn't use it, and I thought, oh, that's, I put it up my wall, like, it's In such a, you know, take exit one that's crazy, right? toward Western Avenue. Wow. And so I actually hang, hung scenes so of them, the, next the pictures of them, because I was so scared, you know, but I know it's not that He's like an evil spirit, the right but there's some right. exit 145A Western Avenue. But there are probably some elements what is not completely, it's not pure, not like a Yogananda soul or something like that, you know. It's not a real, he's a, maybe also a restless soul, but not a really Someone had, kind of a pure would soul. Find like, posters yeah. for of Jim Morris, and so at one point in my life, I had like 10 posters in my room. Wow. One night, one day I'm just going, this is way too heavy. I don't need this. So it's interesting with this, with this whole uh, shenanigan. <clears throat> there, are, there are two interesting polarizing ways that I'm seeing people treating each other. There's... The people who are hoarding the toilet paper and just, you know, fighting each other in the aisles for this stuff. By the way, um, the, the price of toilet paper is going up. Now, do you personally believe that's fair? Do you think that's a... Uh, Maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe you're a business person. Maybe you, you're one of those people who really believe wholeheartedly in, uh, what do they call that? What is that? Supply and demand? Is that what that is? Supply and demand. Um... Does it really need to be... Does it really need to be raised? I mean, honestly. In your heart of ethics and morals, do you think that... Let's say if you were a toilet paper manufacturer... That's actually good, yeah. I'll put you in the shoes of the toilet paper manufacturers. Um, would you personally raise the price on toilet paper? Do you have that kind of mindset? Do you have that kind of... Uh, one might consider greedy, that greedy mindset. Are you one of those people hoarding the toilet paper? Huh? Are you doing it? Are you part of, are you part of the, uh, the issue here? Do you get a satisfaction out of it? If you are, let me try to empathize with you. Do you get satisfaction out of it? Does it make you happy? My mom was at the uh, grocery store the other day in the soup aisle. She's she wanted to get a couple of cans of soup, and there's a lady there just piling it, piling it into her cart. And my mom said, "Oh, uh, do you, can I have a couple of cans of soup? I just need a couple." And the lady said, "No, these are mine." And mom said, "All right, do you, do you have kids at home?" The lady said, "No." Do you have a husband? No. Then, you know. Why, why do you need all that soup? This is my soup. So when the lady wasn't looking, my mom stole a couple of... Not stole, she just took them. Took them right out of her basket. Uh, that, that shouldn't be necessary, folks. That should not be necessary. Not be, that should not be necessary behavior. Why is that even... Why is that even... Existent, you know? So on the one hand, you got that type of mentality... Oh, another one, my buddy Vince, he was at the uh, grocery store, and there was a guy, just all this toilet paper just piled into his cart. And he said, oh, uh, can I have a couple rolls out of there? You know, you, t you took all the rest of the toilet paper. The guy goes, no, this is mine, <laughs> basically. And Vince said, well, aren't, you know, what about everybody else? What about all these other people that might need it? And the guy's like, you gotta do what you gotta do. And when he wasn't looking, Vince took a couple of rolls of toilet paper out of his out of his cart. And while he was standing in line, 
he was standing in line and then like an aisle over he saw he saw the guy and uh he he's he saw the guy over there in the other lane and uh vince got finished paying for for his stuff and he overhears the cashier over there with the guy with all the toilet paper cashier goes sorry sir you're only limited to two and vince (laughs) yells over you gotta do what you gotta do as he's leaving it's like man why 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 did that even have to come about why did that situation have to come about now on the other side we got all these beautiful like in italy have you seen some of those videos the people singing to each other they're out there on the balconies they're singing to each other neighbors are joining in everybody's joining in you've ever heard of that phantom planet song um anthem what was it called An- i think it's just called anthem maybe anthem and in the song it's basically about a guy who has an idea for a song he starts playing his song and all of a sudden he starts seeing all of his neighbors out there singing along and uh yeah oh yeah the song goes the whole world needs an anthem and i'm trying to put the words where they belong yes the whole world needs an anthem and I hope that everyone will sing along, will sing along. It's beautiful, beautiful song. Check it out. Anthem by Plan- a Phantom Planet. Phantom Planet. Astounding song. So let's, 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 let's cross our fingers or put our hands together in prayer. Or sit quietly in meditation and just envision that reality everywhere. That kind of togetherness, that, you know, helping each other out. There are people who are actually being nicer out on the street. I'm noticing people talking to each other. Um, this whole pandemic has given them something, you know, common, a common thing. Isn't that funny? The us versus them thing. Well, the them is the coronavirus. So it's not sports against sports. It's not, you know, uh, left against right. It's like, it's interesting. You know, I realized, I was just thinking, um, yeah, all the toilet paper is gone in case you're wondering. Um, uh, what I realized is that this has taken away, taken away so many opportunities for people to argue with each other about sports and, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Sox are better than Cubs or, or, yeah. you know, Patriots are better than whatever. Um, so it's interesting because the, the, the them is the coronavirus. Us versus them, you know, type of thing. Yeah. So then it goes, okay, this is something we're all dealing with. It's kind of like, like in, in, in ye olden days with, with, the, with, with, the, with the Western times, you'd have these different tribes, these different Indians, different factions, you know, maybe some of them warred against each other and all that stuff. But when... When in comes, you know, like General Custard and all the guy, you know, all the cowboys start coming in. Mm-hmm. That's when all the Indians band together and they put their differences aside. And it's like, can't you guys just do this every day? You know, can't you just go ahead and just do that every day? Uh, <laughs> like it took this for you guys to band together. And then what? Now they're, once they're gone, now you're going to go back to fighting each other. It's so funny. So, yeah, I'm glad. uh this is helping people um, try to band together more. All right, folks, I'm going out to uh, going up to the store right now. Going up to the store. See if I can get some uh, good day. Um, interesting. 
waved hello to a uh, city worker out here, and he, he just kind of looked. That's all right. That's all right. Not everyone is going to respond to you during a time like this. <clears throat> they could either look at you as, uh, well, infected or not infected. 50-50 chance, right? Good guy or bad guy. I'm going up to the store. I'm going to get a uh, some toothpicks. Get some toothpicks. They say that's the... Uh, like my brother, my brother, he's in the uh, dental industry in the sense that he he sells dental equipment to these dentists. And I'm wondering what's going on about that. Are dentists still open? What if people get cavities? What if suddenly, or, uh, or uh, you know, pain in their mouth? I wonder. And then those dentists, they got, they're that close to those people. And then you wonder, is the... They sterilize the equipment. I think they reuse it, right, or no? I don't know. I thought they... I thought they... In my ignorance of such a profession, I would think that maybe each person gets a new set of tools, but man, that'd get pretty expensive, huh? So maybe they've... Maybe they just uh, put it in uh, some kind of dishwasher machine that just really sanitizes the hell out of it. You know, that's what's interesting. This just popped in my mind. Well, okay. Now, if that's the case, will that get rid of the virus? Because they're telling you to wash your hands. And then that, you know, ultimately is supposed to be what is supposed to help you. So, you know, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows, do we? Do any of us know? We have our theories uh, and our opinions. We have uh, uh, we had a couple, couple friendly folks here talking. And they are staying a safe distance away. So yeah, it's quite quite intriguing because quite intriguing because uh, yeah, either you're either the good guy or the bad guy. So my local grocery store here, I don't know what time they open in the morning. Oh. There appear... There, there's a line of... What? Wait, what? There's a line of people standing outside. So I'm kind of curious about what's happening here. Door closed. Oh, Interesting line begins at another door. They're treating this like it's like Great America, like it's like a uh, theme park. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's a line to get into this place. This happening all over the place? I would say that by now, by now, those who have uh you know, gotten there, 800 rolls of toilet paper. Um, I'd like to believe maybe they don't feel it's necessary to keep hoarding. One would hope. One would hope that's not necessary anymore. I mean, it's, one would think, you know, like, that maybe the people who are standing in line right now might might not be the hoarders anymore. Like maybe we went, maybe ideally, maybe we went past the point of of those who are hoarders, you know. And maybe now we're at the point where it's just regular folks who just want to hello, 
just want to get what they want to get and you know unless it's just more and more lines of hoarders I mean is that the case do you think that's kind of crazy I don't know you just maybe the line is there because maybe they're trying to space out the amount of people in the store Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Like it, so you're, you're faced with a decision. You're walking down the sidewalk. And now you're faced with a decision. Which side do I walk on? You know? It's quite an intriguing... Quite an intriguing... Situation all around. All around. So, just as we have the choice of predetermining in our mind whether someone may or may not could possibly have the virus, we also will have that choice in deciding how we're going to treat the overall everything about it. Um, do, do, do we feel empowered to dive deep into what we want to do? Do we feel freaked out? by the general malaise of the uh, populace that seems to be hanging around. The clouds, uh, the clouds are out. It's not raining anymore. That's good. Some folks are viewing this as the mother, is mother nature you know, kind of like going, okay, enough already, folks. Enough already. Others think it's it was manufactured in a uh, in a laboratory. Um, I was reading on Twitter. They're they're showing that um, you know how. When we first heard about this, they were saying, oh my God, there's so many cases of it happening in Italy and all these people are, all these people are dying in Italy. All, you know, all these horrible, horrible amounts of people. And and then, well, that was the beginning. And then uh, now they're coming to find out that, like, Mainly, most of those numbers uh, of those deaths were actually from. Were, they're basically the, they were overinflated numbers. They're blaming the deaths of these people on the virus, rather than like the, the it came to, it came to light that these people actually already had uh, some sort of issue. They're already you know maybe they had a really low immune system or something. Uh, they were already in a hospital. They were already, you know, in the midst of trouble, so to speak. And in came, in came the virus, and all of a sudden, they're no longer. Now they're now they're dying. So there's that idea. Are the numbers overinflated? Who's providing the numbers and who is the go-between of those who are gathering the numbers and then those who are presenting the numbers to the populace? So there, it's like the game of telephone that we always hear about. There's some steps in between here and there. So it's also being reported that in China, the cases... 
have basically slowed down and things are getting better. So now if that's the case and uh, they found some way to combat this thing, um, then wouldn't it be nice if they shared that serum with the rest of the world? One would think. All such crazy stuff to ponder, huh? Hey, it is now 4.20. Uh, let's see what we got here. It's 4.20. The date is 3.21. How cool is that? 3.21. I grew up on 3.21 Arrowhead Trail. Tonight, 3.21, um, on YouTube, we're going to be streaming live for Yachtly Crew. It's a show that we did at the Music Box, a sailed out show. And I don't know when, when it was recorded, but um, we're playing that tonight, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to make a vow to um, finish this podcast before that. <laughs> I've realized that I have a tendency of talking about events going, oh yeah, tonight this is going to happen. And then by the time the podcast comes out, it's like, you know, weeks later, just like the last, last podcast that was there. Um, I had a lot of ideas and thoughts, um, about this whole coronavirus thing. And then all the, and then through the weeks we, I saw those theories coming to play. Um, so now it looks like I sort of retroacted, actively predicted things. Uh, so anyway, main point here is just went up to the market, fetch me some eggs, uh, some, some toothpicks, some pasta, and uh, I was just thinking. So this girl had a Jimi Hendrix T-shirt on. I said, "Wow, Jimi Hendrix, he's the man." She goes, "Yeah, he's a good guy." And it's it's interesting. Well, okay, so I've had to I had to grow my hair long and, and get a beard for a part that I did for a movie called Black Pumpkin, which. If you if you listen, I've got an episode during. Uh, I've got episodes that I record, recorded during that time while I was doing Black Pumpkin, while we were shooting that. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you search Black Pumpkin and Inspirato Projecto on Google, I'm sure those those episodes will come up. So I put all that stuff in the descriptions. And so throughout that time. I told Ryan, I said, Ryan's the writer and the director, uh, yeah, writer and director of it. I said, dude, can't I just get like, uh, can't I just like get, get a, a, what do you call it? Like a, a, you know, spirit gum, put on a fake beard and maybe just get a wig or something. He goes, no, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta grow your hair. You gotta grow the beard and. I said, all right. And then I went, I went right into it. I made this drastic appearance. And then after that, he's like, no, I need you to keep your hair long in the beard because um, uh, I'm going to make this movie called House in the Middle of Nowhere. And I want you to, you know, to, pl- to he wants to dye my hair black. Actually, one half, he wants to dye one half, like Corelli de Ville or something. Half of my hair white, half of it black. And... Um, so he's like, keep your hair long, keep your hair long. And so we kept hearing rumors of getting funding and the funding would fall through. And then, you know, oh, no, 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 we've got funding right around the corner and then they would fall through. So I've noticed that ever since I turned into the sort of like Alan Watts kind of character, the Jesus uh, look. You just get interesting. It's like you're stepping into a brand new character. I'm sure any of you gals out there who wear, uh, you know, do your hair all different and makeup and, you know, you can, it's like that, that phrase, you fake it till you make it. What that is, is you're, you're, you're willing to become that character. It's, it's acting, so to speak. So, 
you know, you're just becoming this character. And it's interesting to see how, how other folks perceive that kind of character. I, I don't know what frames of references they might have. I know maybe Charles Manson is one of them. Um, which is interesting because that was something I wanted to do for, and maybe I still will, for House in the Middle of Nowhere. I was watching Charles Manson videos because I thought, oh, if I can, maybe I can model my character after him. And then soon, you know, at some point, once upon a time in Hollywood came out, so everyone was talking about Charles Manson again. Because he makes a little tiny appearance in there, but no one, they don't say his name right away. Hey, kitty, kitty, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, come on, guy. Come on, come on, come on. I'll let you out in the hallway, but just not now. Hold on. Hold on. I get, let me just get, I just want to get in here. Um... Uh, So, it's interesting, too, because as you find yourself sort of becoming this this different character, you almost find yourself subconsciously doing behaviors of or acting like those kinds of characters you've seen, those kinds of humans that you've seen dressed up in that particular sort of avatar, I'll just say that. And um, it's interesting. It's really quite interesting. So I just thought I'd share that. I don't know if the gal was just being short with me because, you know, limiting talking because of uh, the COVID. No, 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 19. Or what the score is. Some folks would, would, would think that maybe automatically it was their appearance. Uh, I don't normally go in that direction of it's, it's my appearance. I, I usually go in the direction of, oh, it might, might have been something I said. Um, it's just been an awesome, interesting experiment. Some gals like guys with clean-shaved faces. Some gals like guys with long hair and beards. I didn't find that out until I grew the long hair and beards and I started seeing, you know, more uh, more of that type of stuff online. Or I'd see girls going, oh, I like, I like guys with long hair and beards. And I'm like, huh, interesting. That was an unexpected... So, you know, the thing is, it just goes to show you there, there, there is a vibe for everything. There's a vibe for everything. They have noise band uh, festivals where they hire people who just make noise. They just sit up there and they, and they, they're just hitting on pots and pans going, and that's their whole act. And that's it. And maybe a gal on a kazoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's this? Look at that. Did we summon that into uh, existence? See, now now every time that there's an ambulance going down the street, I'm wondering, uh-oh, are they rushing off someone to the hospital with, with COVID? I just found out from my brother today that uh, a guy that he works with his father is a dentist and within, and the guy is like, you know, the, the dad, the, the dude's father is like 50 years old. And uh, he, within a very short amount, so he apparently he, con, he, con, he got it. He contracted it, contacted it, contracted it, contacted it, um, COVID, and now he's in the hospital. They had to poke a hole in his throat to to ventilate so that he could get they could get air out of him. This dude's just having a rough time. So you just never know, man, what the hell's gonna happen here. I heard that people in Runyon Canyon today, there was just tons of them, tons of them. Tons of them. 
Runyon Canyon, for those of you who don't live in Los Angeles, it's a, it's a popular hiking spot. Speaking of Quentin Tarantino, my ex-roommate, my former roommate, Becky Israel, a.k.a. Becky Boxer, phenomenal voiceover actress. She probably does a lot of the commercials you're watching right now, a lot of the uh, voices for cartoons, and uh, she just is just great at voiceover stuff. Uh, she used to hike there all the time. My sister Jenny used to hike there. Um, and while, while Becky was up there, she, she actually saw Quentin Tarantino hiking around up there. So Runyon Cannon, is, it's, a, it's a popular spot. There are tons of places to hike, but that's, that's, a, that's a popular one. So apparently today, since this, the, the, the sun came out, the rain, rain went away, sun came out, people were up there hiking like, like, like crazy, all their dogs and everything. Uh, and then, I guess spring break is happening, so there are a bunch of spring breakers out there in Florida, on the beaches, all coagulated on the beaches. The hell is, what the hell's going on in their brains? Uh, crazy and strange, crazy and strange. I've been watching a lot of interesting, uh, so I saw the movie The Hunt, phenomenal movie. Which then led me to watch uh, Run and Hide, I think it's called. Run and Hide, which is interesting because I think they came out in the same year. They both involve a woman running for her life, hiding, and people coming after her, trying to kill her. Uh, dispatches from Elsewhere, which I talked to you about. Phenomenal, phenomenal show. I heard Better Call Saul came out last night. I didn't see it. I didn't see it, but I need to now that I have reminded myself of it. First episode of season four, maybe? Three or four? Speaking of which, I finished watching all the Better Call Sauls, so this is cool. I'm all caught up, ready to rock and roll. Then, um, what else did I, what else? What else, man? Oh, Westworld. Westworld is out now. Perfect timing. We've got Black Pumpkin and Bloody Bobby. Bloody Bobby has been renamed Legend of Fall Creek. Uh, those are being quality control tested right now. So that way... So that way those will ideally be out soon. So everybody who's stuck at home, they got to... You know, they're, everybody's watching stuff. So they're looking for suggestions. What else, what else, what else, what else, what else did I see? Oh, The Prisoner. I saw The Prisoner TV show. Now, I love the old 1960s version. And I've, I've been wanting to see the miniseries that was made. Hi there. Which they gave the same title. And there are some similarities. Some similarities. Patrick McGowan was, was the, basically the inventor of the first one. So it's, it's, it's interesting because they're still using phrases like, be seeing you, be seeing you. And... Uh, they just don't do the little, he does this little thing with his eye. He makes like a little okay sign and it puts it around his eye and goes Zhoop! and like salutes. Everybody in the town does that. Be seeing you. Uh, but the guy in the very, very, very first episode was wearing the jacket that pa uh, Patrick McGowan wore all throughout the original TV show. It's a really good mind bender. Really, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. Um, really cool to watch, which then I saw Wayward Pines. These are very similar themes. Um, what's interesting is that, what was it? I think I noticed that the, a guy who uh, helped out with the series of The Prisoner also happened to work on Westworld and also happened to work on Uh, Leftovers, I believe. Leftovers is also an awesome show and um, very spiritual, esoteric, supernatural. All that beautiful razzmatazz. So There's just, just, just some good stuff out there I'm catching up on. If you've got any ideas, let me know. I'd love to know. You can always email me, of course. This is the sound of the cat yanking on the couch. He's not supposed to be doing that. Okay, that's enough. 
If you've got suggestions, please email them to me, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com, or you can call the hotline, 561-203-9179, or, and leave, leave, that, uh, leave that on there. Leave that message on there. All right? Uh, and I'll include it in the podcast. Okay. Take care. Maybe, maybe we'll have some more later. All right, so it looks like I wasn't able to uh, get this episode out before we broadcasted. Uh, so, Yali Crew did live stream. We did. We did another. Uh, we did that live stream, and was that a couple days ago? Yeah, a couple days ago, I think it was. And there were a thousand people on there viewing it, at least a thousand. It was sometimes it would go up to like a thousand and ten. I saw at one point, and then it went down to nine ninety, and then it went back up to a thousand. Near the very, very, very end, it went down to seven hundred and eighty. And then there were a bunch of people in the chat bar. I was just having so much fun in that chat bar. My mom was in there. Philly Ocean's mom was in there. The Yachtly Crew guys and their wives and girlfriends are in there. John Garside, director of Max Neptune, he was in there. My brother was in there. It was just really cool. It was a beautiful virtual playground. It was really, it was really fun. I think we're doing this once a week. So my mission is to get these podcasts out more frequently. I have no excuse. Um, I know you're all clamoring for it. It's so funny, man. It's so funny how much we see contradictory stuff out there, huh? It's so funny. I keep seeing these graphs of saying, here's how, here's why we should panic. Here's why we should panic. Here's why we should panic. And then all this other stuff going, here's why we shouldn't panic. And it is intriguing that somehow China has slowed the cases. They have more people in their, in their place than we do here. So intriguing. It's so intriguing. So, evidently there's a cure out there. Vitamins, folks. Whatever whatever strengthens our immune system, that's the key. That's what we want here. We want to strengthen the immune system. Strengthen the immune system. Go down that path. My buddy Mike, who's a nutritionist, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, where, where did that go? Where did that go? He had, he had a great, let's see, he was talking about, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, he said, it's becoming 1919 all over again. Please read up on Dr. Bob Beck's, B-E-C-K-Z, Dr. Bob, B-E-C-K-Z, the godfather of electromedicine. I wrote a lot about him in my book, The Infinity Diet, which, by the way, you guys really ought to read, The Infinity Diet. It's on, it's on Amazon. Uh, Mike goes on to say, he outlines the cures to all viral and pathogenic illnesses in 1991. Wear silver, necklaces, rings, etc. Uh, two, ozone gas and water. As you guys know, I, I drink ozonated water. There, there are those ozonators out there. Test them out. Uh, pet stores sell them machines. Kills 100% of the viruses. Number three, electrostimulators. In parentheses, he puts T-E-N-S machines. He says, perform your own dialysis. Number four, take antioxidants, vitamins A, C, E, zinc, selenium, and asthaxian, A-S-T-H-A-X-I-N. So, there you go, folks. Number one, wear silver. Two, get that, you know... Ozone, ozone, gas, and water. 
three electrostimulators, which is the TENS machines, four uh, vitamins A, C, E, zinc, selenium, and astaxin. So I hope that I hope that helps for you. I woke up from a dream that I was on a stage. Me, I don't. Know, I, I I was up on stage. I think I had like ten minutes up there, and I started singing to the crowd this song that I have called "Great Unknown." So. I just kept messing up the chords. And, you know, it's so interesting. In our dreams, the more stuff that we fear, the more stuff that we're worried about, the more it just keeps going, you know, growing wrong for us. It does not work in our favor. The more we're thinking about what we do want. So this is why dreams are so beautiful. They're instantaneous, instantaneous manifestation. They're showing us how manifestation works in real time, basically. We're in dream time. So, so when you, like, I remember when I was a kid, I'd be like, ah, I'm scared, the monster's going to get me. And then sure enough, sure enough, I'm walking slow or my feet are, you know, sinking into the ground or something and the monster catches me. It's that type of thing. It's that that mentality of like, uh oh, things might, you know, chances are things are going great right now, but chances are things will go wrong. Well, what if we didn't let that enter into our brains? What if we didn't let that thought enter our brains? What if we just thought things are going good? And then we could stay in that spirit and we go, all right, all right, things are going good. And then when something comes upon us like this, like this quarantine. Puts the brakes on all production. Well, not necessarily, because look, I'm producing right now. You're producing. We all have the ability to steep, keep to continue producing. So the idea is like, okay, so we got that excitement. Like we had uh, momentum building up for a house in the middle of nowhere. That movie. And uh, it halted it. Well, what what can I do right now to still stay in that vibe despite the illusion of what's going on. So in our dreams, that's the crazy thing. In our dreams, we have, we think in our brains, oh my gosh, this is probably going to go wrong. And then it does, or oh, this might go right. That's it right there. It's the energy we're putting in. It's the energy we're putting in. That morphs and morphs and morphs, and then before we know it, it, be, it grows into this thing. It grows, it grows into this thing. Um, and by the way, folks, the genius, this is how you could tell a genius. It's the, the genius are the ones who follow their dreams to the end. There you go. That's a quick, concise definition of a genius <laughs> genius genie us when i used to substitute teach i'd tell the kids genie plus us is genius we are the genie we are the genie we are the ones who are making it happen you're the genie Today is the 23rd. 23 is the number of uh, synchronicity. Well, yeah, because that, that, that breaks down to number five. Number five is the number of synchronicity. So how many, any derivatives of that number? 32, 23, uh, 14... Whatever else is out there. It is a beautiful sunny day out here in California. Eh? It's uh, it's been raining a lot. 
I have not seen a single chemtrail in the sky. Yesterday I saw a contrail. That's different than a chemtrail. Chemtrails are, are way high up there. And uh, it usually just... A chemtrail usually... Uh, wow, I just walked past a homeless lady laughing, laying on her back with her shirt off. Uh, first time I've seen a topless homeless woman. interesting i gotta say this this situation outside it's like mad max but in a very civilized way <laughs> you know mad max was like out in the desert just you know not much in sight there's a lot of insight here uh buildings whatnot so Now we're back online, back at home. Um, I had to pick up the uh, some pill pockets for my cat. He's got a thyroid issue, so we, we hide those pills <clears throat> with his pills, his medication within the pill pocket. So, yeah, I just uh, got cut off by phone call. What I wanted to say was I haven't seen any chemtrails in the sky. Now... Uh, if you research chemtrails, look it up. Look up chemtrail. Lots of videos about them. Lots of stuff going on. S some believe that ba basically they're, uh, I'm having they're... Some believe they're basically harbingers of uh, just bad news. Bad news. So my theory is what if those chemtrails, because it's been said that, they alter the weather. They do something strange with that weather. So, what's interesting is ever since we've been quarantined and been inside, maybe the chemtrail people, the pilots, have not been, maybe that's like, maybe that's like one of those, like a luxury item, so to speak. You know, that you spend something extra on. Kind of like, Ladies like to go to the salon, they get their, their, uh, uh, they think it's important, you know, it's really important to get their hair done, their nails, all that jazz. A very, you know, call it what you will. Narcissistic, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't want to rip on anyone who does that, but it's not essential, right? It's not essential so, to paint your face up like a clown. It's really not essential. Um, it's just, you know, a luxury item. So maybe, maybe that's what's going on here with these chemtrails. They're sort of like that, like, okay, we don't need the chemtrails up there. Let's just, you know, we can't pay for those guys right now. So what I'm thinking is maybe because the chemtrails are not up there in the sky, that's a part of the, re this is my theory, part of the reason why we are seeing such huge earth changes going on. We've heard about the canals in Venice clearing up, fish swimming in it. There's lots of great news about that. Oh, here, here's something. Okay. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out here. This is something I just read. This is really interesting. Oh, God. This is kind of a... Okay, so here we go. Uh, here's something I just saw here. China has closed all 16 temporary coronavirus hospitals in Wuhan. They don't have enough new cases to support them. Here's another one. Doctors in India have... Now, under each of these, it cites the source. It cites the source where they came from. So I might as well tell you this. This One of the many sources is the New York Post. That's what I'll do. I'll read this to you and I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the source. I'll tell you the source here. Uh, doctors in India have successfully treated an Italian COVID-19 patient. The combination of drugs used include lopinavir, ritonavir, oseltamivir, and chloroquine. Chloroquine. Source, Times of India. 
A team of 10 scientific researchers from the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam and Utrecht University say they are the first in the world to discover an antibody capable of fending off an infection by COVID-19. The discovery could lead to an antiviral medication. Source, the I believe that's the Netherlands Times and Erasmus magazine. <clears throat> A 103-year-old Chinese grandfather has made a full recovery from COVID-19 after being treated for six days in Wuhan, China. Source. (coughs) Uh, Daily Mail, UK. Apple has responded, reopened. Apple has reopened all 42 of its retail stores in China. Source, BBC, Business Insider. I wonder if they've also opened up all of their... Uh, factories with, you know, children. Uh, Cleveland Clinic has developed a COVID-19 test that gives results in hours, not days. News 5 Cleveland, Cleveland Clinic. Good news from South Korea, where the number of new cases is declining. Source is BNO Newsroom, NBC News. One of the reasons Italy was hit so hard, experts say, is because they have the oldest population in Europe and the second oldest population on Earth after Japan. Source, ABC News, New York Times. Multiple potential COVID-19 vaccines are currently in development and testing with at least three in the U.S. The source is NBC News. The first three people to test positive for COVID-19 in the state of Maryland have recovered and are able to resume their normal lives. The three include a married couple in their 70s and a woman in her 50s. Source, Fox 5 DC. A team of Canadian scientists has successfully isolated and grown copies of of the coronavirus, bringing the world a step closer to finding a vaccine. Source, New York Post. A San Diego biotech company is developing a COVID-19 vaccine in collaboration with Duke University and National University of Singapore. Source, CBS 8 News in San Diego. The first person to test positive for COVID-19 in Oklahoma has recovered. This individual has had two Negative tests, which is the indicator of recovery. Source, Tulsa World News for Oklahoma. So, what is being done to help out these folks? That's what we're probably very curious to know. What are they doing? Huh? What's going on here that's enabling that? It's quite intriguing. So, the world... You know, the world is waking up. A lot of folks are saying that we're sort of entering into the new earth, if that's the case. That's quite intriguing. The first time I heard about the new earth was from Dolores Cannon in her, in her uh, many times in her books, The uh, Convoluted Universe. You got to check out those books, Convoluted Universe. So it's, it's a... Uh, It's quite intriguing. It's quite intriguing. Uh, The world is waking up. The nefarious folks who are keeping us, you know, keeping us uh, whatever, monitored, uh, sick, all that jazz. They're not, at least they're not up there spraying their chemtrails. And I think that's why, maybe that's why it's been raining so much here. I mean, the skies are actually blue. You know what I'm talking about when I say chemtrail? You will look up there and it looks like zigzags across the sky, like a freaking, like a spider web. And those little tiny particles, they fly down and they get in your lungs. It's been said that barium is in those chemicals. Look up the articles. There are, there are pilots who actually... Uh, admit to this. Yeah, there's not a single one up there in the sky. Wow. This will be interesting. You know, what if all this stuff that everyone's been talking about, climate change, climate change, climate change. I mean, could it be the chemtrails? Could it be the chemtrails? That's the cause that I don't know. I don't know. This is pure speculation. It's just something to think about. Now, Having said that, I've learned that, you know, the, the more that we are feeling stress, the more that we are feeling anxiety, the more that we're flipping out, 
the more uh, the, the 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 easier it is. It's it's like it's it's asking. It's like inviting the coronavirus into your body by having all that stress, all that panic. Now's the time to calm down. Now's the time to calm down. Relieve some stress. Investigate. Doing what you want to do. Like right now, I'm wa- I'm about to watch the new episode of Westworld. I'm so excited. So, that's all I wanted to say for now. Oh, no. The other thing I wanted to say. We live streamed. We live streamed. It was fun. We're going to be doing it again. So, if you if you follow me on Instagram, watch to my Instagram or even the Yachtly Crew Instagram. They'll probably let you know right away on the Yachtly Crew Instagram when it's going to happen. So, we had, I mean, I couldn't believe it. We had all those people watch. So fun. So, we'd love to see you in there. Let's talk in the chat box. Let's do it. All right. Take care. Computer says, bright skies, log on, admin. Computer says, write me a poem. Computer says, dial me. Computer says, It's Superhero, and you're listening to Inspirado Projecto.